Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back. Let's talk about children and let's talk about their digestive health, about how to really get a child set up properly in life. You know, it's a very important thing to do is to get the digestive foundation, uh, give a good basis. To me, it's like building a house. When you build a house and you want it to last a long, long time, preferably more than, you know, 50, 60 or you know, even 100 years, you've got to get the foundation right. There's no point trying to hang up pretty paintings and pictures and curtains if you haven't even got the slab down properly, you know, and then got your footings all right to establish, you know, a superstructure on a foundation. Now, the foundation for your child is their digestive system. That's their, their foundation. So let's talk about seven ways on how you can really shape that foundation and get it into good condition. So as that superstructure builds, you know, i.e. as a child grows up, it's going to have a very powerful structure on the foundation, all right? So first thing that I encourage uh, parents, if possible, is to have a normal, healthy vaginal birth, like a natural birth instead of a C-section. And your doctor will tell you this, you know, your OBGYN, your pediatrician will tell you that the children born naturally tend to have the natural bacteria more than the ones that are born with C-section. So a child that's born naturally vaginally as opposed to c-section is going to have a better bacterial count uh, straight off the bat than a child that has been born with c-section <clears throat> all right that's very important uh, second one is i always encourage uh, nursing or breastfeeding because this is a really good way for your child to get a powerful start in life is to get that breast milk okay particularly the first three months is very very crucial now, this can be a make or break for a lot of children well down the track, particularly when a child's, you know, 12, 14 or something and has had multiple rounds of antibiotics. They've been on formula feeds for, you know, a long time. I've seen this so much in the clinic over the years. Those children often end up getting allergies. They get sick. They get diseases because the foundation wasn't really set properly, okay? So the nursing, the breastfeeding, the, the healthy birth, these are <clears throat> one of the two most important things you can do to establish that, that foundation, all right, to get it started. Uh, the third one, let me just cross these off. The third one I could easily say is try and be really careful and not to give antibiotics to children unless it's a life or death situation, okay? It has to be a serious reason for uh, an antibiotic, otherwise it's not really worth giving. In case of meningitis, particularly bacterial meningitis, I mean, there's no one going to argue about antibiotics, okay? But when it comes to a tiny little cut on a finger, you don't need to put a child for seven days on penicillin because they cut their finger or because their dog licked their face, they need to go straight away to some sort of surgical ward. <clears throat> some parents are like that. It's crazy. So I really don't like antibiotics for children. I'd put it in the same category, I mean, it sounds disgusting almost, as a really bad, shady person hanging around a child, you know what I mean, that kind of person. To me, it's just sordid, it's disgusting, it's something I, I can't even contemplate in my mind, a young children getting antibiotic, because I've seen the destruction in the gut of children for many, many years. I've dealt with thousands of cases of adults, you know, teenagers and children that have been treated with antibiotics, and I've seen the incredible devastation caused and sometimes lifelong because of these pharmaceutical drugs. So be very, very careful about, you know, putting a child on antibiotics, particularly recurrently. It's just crazy to do that, to go from one round to another round to another round. It, to me, it's just, it's insane to do that. The third one, let's have a look here. What are we going to, that's right. The third one we'll talk about is let the kids play with pets. Like let them be around animals, you know, let them get bacteria from other animals. Okay. Let them get bacteria from other people. It's important for children to be exposed to animals. And again, some families have no animals in the house at all. Not even a goldfish, not a bird, nothing, not a cat, not a dog. They have a completely clean house. The child's hands are wiped with wipes four or five times a day. I mean, it's not really the way to live a life, is it? So let the kids play, okay? That's number four. Number five, don't sterilize everything. Don't walk around constantly wiping the child's hands five times a day with these wipes, wiping doorknobs down, wiping toys down, wiping everything down, because everything's got bacteria on, okay? Bacteria need to challenge that child's growing and expanding immune system. So it's very good for children to play outside in the dirt. It's good for kids to do that, all right? And not to be 
in an environment where everything's sterile and aseptic and clean constantly because it's not going to give the immune system much to be challenged with. And then when a bad virus or bacteria comes along, it can really overwhelm the body's immune system in that case. So try not to be so clean all the time, constantly clean, okay? Well, you know what I mean. Clean's one thing, dirty's one thing, but, but you know, sterile and, and over-tidy is another, okay? Number six, feeding fermented and cultured foods is a really good thing to do. So try and get your kids started early on things like yogurt, on sauerkraut, things like that when they're really young. I got my kids involved in sour foods at a very early age, and now it's not a problem. They're adults. They can eat. They eat those foods. But unless you start young, it might be a bit difficult you know, for the child to accept it. Point number seven is give the kids plenty of fiber. Okay, because fiber in the diet, we're talking legumes, we're talking nuts and seeds and bananas and fruits and different things like that. This is, encourages the beneficial bacteria to grow. All right, so giving them fiber foods um, is a very, very smart thing to do. So that's seven different points uh, that you can really encourage your child's gut health to get to a whole new level. Okay, and if you do that, you'll find that the child will become <clears throat> a very strong a powerful adult without too many problems. It's worked for my form. Thanks for tuning in.